All right, looks like I am live. Welcome to day one of my November Hair Color Secrets three day boot camp. Welcome, welcome. So I wanted to um, take a time take time to introduce myself for those of you who this may be your first boot camp with me. Um, you haven't attended a boot camp. You haven't seen one of my many coffee chats or um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. So if you're new to me, hello, my name is Elaine Travis. I have owned a hair salon for 32 years, specializing in hair color, and I've been a licensed hairdresser for 35 years. The last three years, I have stepped away from behind the chair and have dedicated myself 100% to education. I'm a brand free hair color educator. And what does that mean? The beauty of being brand free is I can tell it like it is. I'm very honest. I don't sugarcoat anything and I don't have to sell you any products. So I don't have to tell you something's wonderful when I don't really think that it is. So that is why I choose to remain independent. My favorite part of what I do is being able to pass on the wisdom that it took me much longer to learn than I would like for it to take you. Uh, when I started out in the industry, I tried to pretend that I knew how to hair color um, because I was afraid. It was, it was all fear-based. I didn't want to admit what I did not know, and I didn't know where to find the information. Remember, 35 years ago, there was no cell phone. There was no computer. The only way to get information was through a magazine through an in-person class, and you had to find out about the in-person class through the magazine. So if you didn't subscribe to American Salon or Modern Salon or any of the trade magazines, you were pretty much on your own. You graduated beauty school, you knew what you knew when you got out of school, and it was on you to find a really strong mentor to give you what you need to succeed behind the chair. So when I started out, I made the mistake of skipping over the mentorship piece. I tried to go right behind a chair. I was so excited that someone gave me my own chair right out of school, and I thought I had it all covered until people started asking about color. They would bring a picture in and say, I want this, and I would literally crap my pants. I have no idea how to get them from where they were to what that picture looked like. Fast forward to today, there is not a single picture you can put in front of me that I can't immediately break down what the steps are to get that client there and explain to them how long it's going to take, how many visits it's going to take, and how much it's going to cost. So you're in the right place if you are not feeling the same way. If you get tons of butterflies and sweaty palms when you see a brand new color client on your book, you're in the right place. You need to be here because by the end of this three-day workshop with me, you're going to have much more confidence in what you're doing behind the chair. And I am here for you when this ends. These three days are just the beginning. I want to hold your hand and be your mentor to get you to the point where I am and where other people that I have trained are now, where there is no complicated project that can put fear into you anymore, because we take it back to the basics. Most of us kind of faked our way through the basics just to get finished school and to get busy behind the chair and start getting our hands in hair. I was guilty of it too. I was like, okay, okay, okay. I hear you about the color wheel. I get it. But you know, what does, I remember looking at the color wheel and I was like, what does, you know, lime green have to do with hair color? Now, of course, 35 years ago, people didn't wear lime green hair color. Today they do. So I find it to be even more confusing now because people actually want blue and green and the colors that we used to be fearful of turning people accidentally. So in session one, I like to go into brassy hair because for me, the number one question that I get the most often and my most popular classes at in-person shows that I've traveled the country teaching like Premier Orlando that was just this last weekend and um, IBS New York. I've done the uh, California Long Beach show. Um, I was supposed to do the Chicago show finally, and that was canceled. I was really bummed about that. But my most popular class is always this class that I'm going to be giving to you right now. It's called Lex Let's Kick Some Brass, because I think you'll admit that that is the number one issue for all of us is how do we keep 
our hair from being brassy? Um, how can we, you know, get the results that we want minus all of the orange, blue orange brassiness that comes with lightening hair? So I just want to say uh, a special thank you to all of you that are here because you also attended Revival and you heard me talk about the boot camp in Revival. We had an amazing time at Revival. I see Sonia's here. Sonia was very active in Revival. I see Johnny. Johnny was at Revival. Um, for some of you, if you didn't give StreamYard permission, I can't mention you by name. It'll just say Facebook user. So I apologize. Um, someone's calling me the Harry Godmother and I don't know who it is. It just says Facebook user. If you are new to Elaine's teaching, you won't be disappointed. She is the hairy godmother. <laughs> I'm, I'm a hairy godmother in more ways than one on most days. But thank you to whoever that is. You can type in your name um, in a comment so that I know who's calling me the hairy godmother. I love that. So understanding brassiness and why does it happen? I can't tell you how many times I see a comment that makes my blood pressure go through the roof on a... Um, either a Facebook group or Instagram or somewhere where someone says, this client of mine, I don't know what to do. She pulls a lot of warmth. She pulls a lot of red. She pulls brass. The word pulls makes me crazy because the client isn't pulling anything. It's not her fault. It's you're choosing to do a service on her hair when you're not understanding what the hair has to go through to not be brassy. So you, in fact, are creating the brassiness that you're blaming her hair for pulling. So at the end of this class, you're going to understand that it's been you all along. And then you're going to say to me, well, what am I supposed to do? That's the way that you have to do it but I'm going to show you a different way and it's going to be totally foreign to you. And you may have to wait until session three. It depends on the, the, you know, what we get through tonight and what we get through in the next two sessions. But there are ways to get anyone a brass free lighter result. So I'd like to start with, I'm going to be doing a PowerPoint, but I promise you it is not your typical boring PowerPoint. The reason that I share the PowerPoint is for you to have a visual and for my ADD to stay on track. It's totally for me because I get so excited. I could talk about hair color all day, every day. I never get tired of it, but I get so excited. They go, I go off into different uh, lanes and stories and I don't want you like, we'll get to the point. What was that thing that you were going to tell us? So call me out in the comments if I get off topic because I don't want to do that to you. So this picture... I love sharing because this is my journey from my natural color, which is the top far left. That was my high school graduation picture where I described myself on the regular, um, you know, my driver's license, if I filled out a form for a job or anytime I was asked hair color, eye color, I said blonde hair, blue eyes. Do I look blonde in that picture? I am not blonde at all, but I thought that I was blonde because I was blonde as a kid. So I identified as a blonde, no matter how deep my hair got with age, I still considered myself a blonde and I can laugh about it now. Um, what I love about that picture is my beautiful straight teeth. I had braces and they're perfect there and they're not looking so perfect anymore. So that makes me sad. But you can see in my hair up in those crazy 80s bangs, you can see some lighter tips. And that's what used to happen naturally from the sun. And I loved that that happened from the sun. So then you see me with Robert Chromines. That was in Italy. And that was me with, I had very little gray. And I was able to just get highlights. And I was able to be a somewhat cool. I wasn't super cool, but I was a manageable, cool color, more of a beige color. And I was very happy. And then the gray started to come in. So I was like, okay, now I have to do something else. So you see the progression, the, the Elvis impersonator picture, that was me growing out a double process blonde. I had gone to a Beth Minardi class at her beautiful salon and she used me as a model to take me from a base break blorange into a cooler blonde and she did a double process. So that was me trying to grow out a double process. It was not an attractive look at all. I look horrible in that green shirt. I don't know what I was thinking wearing that color with my coloring, um, but that was that growing out. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to go back to my base break. So bottom left is Elaine with a base break. So you'll hear in this presentation, I am not a fan of base breaks. And this is why you see that peachy 
banana, super yellow, awful, bright, brassy color. That's what happens when you break the base of hair. And I'll explain more what a base break is during the PowerPoint. Then the next picture, I'm in California. I'm like, okay, no more base break. Just let some of your natural grow in and just go back to highlights. But there I am in the sun and it's getting more golden. And then far right lower picture is my hair now because I've learned all the things that I'm going to share with you tonight on what it took to get my hair. Now tonight I have a new camera and full disclosure, this camera is making my hair look extra yellow, but in person, it's more like that photo that was just in that um, bottom right. It's, it's cool. It has a lot of my natural coming through it, which I like. It's much more low maintenance. So the brassiness in all of those pictures was caused by me not understanding that the holy grail for me of hair color was I need to know how JLo is light with no brassiness, how like she's Latino. I was like, her hair has to be as dark as mine. How does she get that beautiful beigey pale highlight with no brassiness? And it stays that way and it looks beautiful all the time. So over these 35 years, if I wanted to know what was going on with JLo's hair, I reached out to JLo's hairdresser, who was Tracy Cunningham, and I went and took her class. And I did not leave that class until I found out how JLo ends up looking that way and doesn't get brassy. How Tracy Cunningham made Fergie the most gorgeous color blonde I've ever seen in my life during the Super Bowl a few years ago. And I always thought that Fergie was probably pretty dark naturally. So I went to the source and I traveled the country and Europe going to every single hair color show I possibly could go to. As a matter of fact, I stopped going to cutting education completely. I just stopped. I said, I just want to master this one thing. And if you have my book, which you see the where am I? You see the thing on the wall, A Colorful Journey. I talk about my story in the beginning of the book and it's it's not to brag or to make it my memoir. You know, I've seen people um, on Amazon on the reviews of the book, they're like, well, if you want to hear about her life story, buy the book. If you want to learn about hair color, it's a waste of money. I disagree. I think it's a great beginning start to hair color education in a different way. But I share my story because my story is my everything. The reason that I now consider myself an expert colorist and the reason I feel like I am um, qualified to teach you is because I have done nothing else for 35 years but hone in on that particular craft. That was my, my niche market. That was who I wanted to spend my time with was women who needed great hair color. And what I found over those 35 years is... Clients, most clients do not know the difference between good color and great color because they've never had great because 80% of colorists are getting by the way that I was the first five years that I did color. They're getting by with basic, you know, basic N formulas, 7N, 6N, 5N, just using the natural or neutral and just letting whatever the heck happens in the hair come up and just being okay with it. And then turning to the client saying, I really wish I could make you cooler, but your hair just pulls so much warmth. Tell me in the comments if that's you. If you're still telling your clients that that's just you, your hair is just, your hair just does that. So here, here's my peeps telling you that I'm not just bragging about my book. They're telling you that they like my book too. So I think, I think it's a good little book. I mean, it's not a scholarly a uh, journal. It's not um, going to win any Pulitzer Prizes, but it is facts about hair color that I tried to narrow down. If I could have a conversation with someone and give them the wisdom that it took me a long time to get, I would put it all into this book. And then the book becomes the entry level for someone knowing who I am and then coming to my classes and allowing me to be their mentor. So I couldn't possibly put every single thing in a book. And that's why some people, when they read it, they're like, oh, it's only 95 pages. I'm like, honey, I could, I could write the Encyclopedia Britannica and have a book this thick. But I think most hairdressers would rather learn this way. We're very visual and we like to hear it, see it, and then we like to do it. So I think a book is great for like the, the basic things, 
but um, you know, more advanced things are more, this, this format is better. So let me start with my PowerPoint. Do you guys like little me, big PowerPoint, big me, little PowerPoint, or in between? <laughs> what do you think? How does that look where I'm kind of in between? Because I know sometimes when I do just the PowerPoint, people are like, where did you go? I want to see you when you're talking. So I'll leave it there unless you think it needs to be bigger. So the top five things that we do that cause brassiness are what we're going to talk about tonight. And notice I said, we do that cause, not why brassiness happens. It's what we do that causes brassiness. So we have to take ownership of that happening. So number one is first and foremost, 100% improper formulation of base color. What does that mean? So a client comes to see us and we see what she has on her existing hair and we look at her natural level and we look at her percentage of gray and she asks us for something. Usually in my experience, it's, I want to be a little bit lighter than my natural and I want my gray covered. How many people hear that all day long? Type one in the comments if that's what you hear all day long. I want my gray covered and I want to be a little bit lighter than my natural, but I don't want any warmth because that's what I heard for 35 years over and over and over, whether it was a brunette, a redhead, a blonde, a multidimensional combination of all of the above. That's what we hear every single day. So then we say, okay, she wants to be cool, but she also has gray. So which do I take care of? Because if I take care of the gray, I need to have a certain shade in that mixture to cover the gray, but that same shade that's going to cover my gray is also the shade that's going to allow for the natural warmth that comes out of the hair when lightening. I'm going to say that again. When you use the shade that's necessary to cover gray well and properly, it is allowing any of the natural warmth that occurs in the hair naturally by God and science in the hair. It has nothing to do with the client's personality, the client's choice. That's just the way that we're born. And unless we are from Europe where we're born with, you know, toehead blonde hair, they're the only people that don't get warm when they lighten is a toehead. A toehead is someone who's like level 12. They have white hair out of the womb. They don't have any of what's called pheomelanin causing that warmth in their hair. But for the rest of us, this is a handy tool going to go back to just me for a second. So this tool shows you the levels. Actually, let me show you on here. I put it on here so you could see it close up. So look on the left there. You can see exposed contributing pigment. So every single level that you go up from this one starts at two. So from two all the way to 10, every single level that you go up gets warmer and warmer. The warmth starts to be visible at level five. It gets brighter and more orange as you go up the scale. So at level five, you're going to get that rich, like picnic table, red color. It's like a rich, almost violety red. Then level six is going to start being more orangey, more towards that orange brown. Seven is going to be more like the girl in the picture you just saw, that like brighter orange. Eight's going to be more like the picture that I showed you of me, where it's just so brassy that it's like on the border between orange and yellow. And then nine is your pale yellow, and 10 is where there's hardly any yellow left. And you're more at the um, super pale, almost white stage. So that's what happens in anyone who sits in your chair other than an albino and someone from Eastern Europe with, I don't even know if it's Eastern Europe. I'm, why did I even go there? I'm terrible at geography. Why did I even go there? From Sweden, Switzerland, one of those countries, how everybody's gorgeous and blonde and it comes out of their skull completely like the palest shade that you see on my head. They're born with that and there's no warmth in there to come out because they're already past that, if that makes sense. So those are the only people that are not going to get warm and brassy. So then... You know, what happens is we say, 
um, oh, you know, she's a natural level five. We just pull it out of our butt, right? We're just like, oh, she's natural level five. And she said she wants to be two levels lighter. So that's a seven. So, all right, she wants to be lighter. She wants to be a seven. So I'm going to grab a tube of a seven because that's what she wants. And she's coming from a five and that's two levels. So I'm going to use a seven with 20 volume. I'm going to put that on her hair and she's going to get the level seven that's not too warm that she wants. But instead, what's going to happen is a level seven tube of color applied to a level five if, in fact, she is a five and not a four. If you actually take the time with this tool and lay it into the hair, you'll see where it like disappears into the hair and you can no longer see it. That's the level that the person is. So this is me disappearing. What is that? Yep. So I am a five naturally. So if you assume that it's a five and then you put this up there, especially in the back, in the deepest part of the guest's head, if she turns out to be a four, now you're putting level seven color on a four natural base. You're going from a four to a seven, which is three levels of lift. You're using a tube of seven. The place that you're going to arrive is by adding those two numbers together, seven and four, and dividing by two. So do the math right now. Let's say she really was a five. Let's forget about the four. She really was a five, and we're using that tube of seven. I want you to add together seven, the tube you're using plus five, the natural color. Seven plus five is what? I know you guys aren't that bad at math. I know there's a delay for me. <laughs> Leanne said 12. So seven plus five is 12. Then 12 divided by two is six. So where your client will end up when you thought she was going to be a beautiful seven, which remind me a beautiful seven doesn't exist. Remind me to come back to that. The ADD is clicking in. So you got her to a six. Look at what six is. Look how orange that is. So your little cute level five client that thought she was just going a little bit lighter than her natural, but one of those grays covered. Now she is blorange. She is angry. She is crying. You are crying because you really thought that you were getting her to the seven. But let's talk about that. Let me go back to sharing that level finder. So let's look at seven. Seven is pretty warm too. Not quite as orange as the other one, but there is some orange in level seven. So even if you did accomplish what you thought you were going to and you got her to a seven, a seven, a five, six, seven, and eight are all warm levels. Every single one of them. So you simply, this is going to make your day because this is only day one of boot camp, and I'm solving the puzzle of your entire career that you would have wasted your time trying to figure out because I did. And I really was hard on myself. I'm like, I just, I'm doing something wrong. Why are all my clients so warm? What am I doing wrong? I'm doing exactly what I was taught. Why are they so orange and red and super warm? What am I doing wrong? And then I hunt it down Tracy Cunningham and Johnny Ramirez and all these celebrity colorists to find out that all along, I, I felt like Dorothy and Wizard of Oz. All along, it just was simply not possible. It's not possible. So what we do is we get them as close to what they want as possible. And it involves multiple steps. You can't put something, I was at the beauty supply today because as you can see, my roots are in and I want to try something new, but I am terrified and poor Johnny is gonna be the one that I'm gonna ask to do this. So I'm gonna be annoying, um, but I've done my formula for so long and it has worked well for so long. And now my gray is starting to take over the party. So I have to change it. And everything that I picked up in my hand, I was like, no, I'm going to go back to that blorange. And I'd rather see some of my gray stick around 
than be that orange color. Like this camera tonight is making me crazy how warm I look. I can't stand to see that banana color, that in between, not quite, like I like the bottom down here better than the way this is looking. And it's all this new camera that I have and it drives me nuts. So how does that feel hearing from me right now in day one of boot camp? How does it feel to know that what you've been trying to do isn't you not being successful? It's that it doesn't exist in nature. It cannot happen. You cannot put something in a tube or bottle or, or yeah, bottle or tube into a bowl or a bottle and apply it to the hair and lift so many levels and not have any warmth at all. It's simply not possible. So let's go back to our slide. So improper formulation. And then number two, improper lifting when lightening globally or in foil. So look at this girl's picture. She came to me from, after going to a salon, she was a level five young virgin haired brunette. And it was in the beginning of balayage. Balayage was just starting to become popular. People were just starting to do classes. Um, she came in and said, I went to a salon and got a balayage. Does that look like a balayage? There's not a single brown hair left on her head. So whoever did it probably took a class on YouTube and decided they were a balayager and they overpainted her obviously because there's no brown hair left and they most likely panicked because they used a clay lightener and if you've used clay lightener you know that you can get a really false sense of being finished because the clay hardens and gets super white and I've been guilty of it myself I'm like oh crap look how white that is and you rush them to the sink you turn the water on and the clay goes away and underneath is what is showing on this girl's hair. So you cannot glaze or tone away improper lifting. I'm going to say that again. And I hope you're taking notes because these are gems of 35 years of trying to prove these theories wrong and it just can't be done. So this girl, I couldn't just dump one, all one size fits all one glaze on her. I could... I could have taken her back to her brown, absolutely. But to keep her light and at the level of lift that she was and take away the orange is simply not possible. So you can't glaze away your mistake of improper lifting. And I can't stress that enough. That's why I'm repeating it and being like an annoying teacher. Um, you have to then lift further and take her out of that orange before you can go back in and make it a beautiful result. You either have to go much darker and take it away completely, and then you're making more work for yourself because you know she wants to be lighter or she wouldn't have started this whole mess in the first place. So if you go that route and you're saying, oh, I just want to get rid of it all, you panic, you're like, oh, she just doesn't want to be orange, let me go in with a level five, just get rid of everything, get her back to her natural, and then I'm going to highlight. Well, now... You just created another barrier of lifting through a fresh color. So a lot, there's a lot of confusion between what a demi color is and what a permanent color is and what the similarities are between the two. So I go into that heavily in my membership, Hair Color Secrets Insider. And the, what, what your, my members will tell you is the biggest aha for them is how to properly use demis and how to make your job easier and not have to fight through all the inkiness and heaviness of permanent color. So you can't glaze away your improper uh, lightning. That's number two. So this is her after I got a hold of her. And when I tell you, this only took me an hour. But what I had to do is you'll see I had to deepen the areas that needed contrast again. So that's why I was able to do that quickly because we were deepening that orange. So anywhere where you see that beautiful brown that looks like her natural color, that's where I was able to deepen all that. And then the, the pretty blonde pieces, we had to go in and highlight through and take it further past that orange to fix it. So it was, believe it or not, it was a super easy fix. So number three, I talked about in the beginning when I showed you um, my photo of all of my hairstyles all through, through the years um, with handling brassiness. 
So this is one of my best friends. She is a sales rep for a manufacturer hair color company. And she is a salon. I call her the salon hoe because any salon that she's in, if she has a little bit of regrowth, she's like, Hey, can I jump in your chair? And can you just throw something? Can you just break my base? So she would ask for a base break. So if you're new to base breaking, I hope that you're new to it and you never do it. <laughs> um, I know if you were at revival, Joe Blackwell was saying how she base breaks everyone. I know Christina Russell, who's our redhead specialist. She does a lot of base breaking, but for Christina, it makes sense to me because she's a redhead specialist. The only time that I break someone's base, and I will explain what that is. The only time I do that service is when I'm looking for warmth. I am on purpose bringing out the blorange. That's when I do it. If I'm looking for a cool blonde for myself or for this friend in the picture, I would never do that because what a base break is, is you're putting on permanent color at a high level. So her base is like a four or five and they would put on a level nine hair color in an ash cool base with 20 volume developer. You apply it really quickly all over to all the regrowth all over the head. When Usually when they have highlights, you're trying to, to blur that line between the dark regrowth and the highlight color. So they apply it really quickly. By the time you start in the front, by the time you've applied it all the way to the nape, you take them right to the sink and you shampoo it. And what it's doing is it's starting the lifting process and just taking some of the harshness of that dark root. But think about, let's go back to the level finder. So if we're going in and we're only giving her five minutes of color and she's a level four, Look at on the level finder where we're going to take her to with that base break. If we're lucky, we're going to get a half a level of lift. A half a level of lift is going to be four and a half going into that woodsy red level five. So we're not really doing her any favors. We're just bringing out warmth. And a lot of people that do them regularly will argue with me and they'll say, I do them all the time. It's gorgeous. And I say, I get it. I understand that you think it's gorgeous. But look at this girl on the lower left side. I thought she was gorgeous too. <laughs> I was perfectly happy with that color because I didn't really realize how bad it looked because the day of the service of the base break, it looks more like the picture of me with Robert Chromines. It just looks like a softer version of the Elvis color where you don't, you know, see how in the Elvis picture, there's like a black line down my head. It looks like I have black roots and greeny blonde ends. So in the Robert Chromines, my natural looks just a little bit softer. So that probably was my first uh, foray into base breaking. And that's why it doesn't look super brassy. But as soon as that coolness of the color pushes off, because remember, cool is the first thing for the hair to absorb. And it's also the first thing to go. So the cool tones get sucked in when we're glazing. Did you ever overtone someone? You're like, why is it so blue and muddy? But they wash their hair three times and that's the first to go. And then the brassiness seems to hang on forever. So I am not a fan of root shadows. And that is why, because, um, oops, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Because the, um, the warmth always comes back inevitably. And then you're, you know, trying to get rid of it like that other, person that I showed in the last slide. And number four, a lot of people are hearing through the grapevine about root shadows, root melts. It's all different terminology for blending the um, client's natural color with her new highlights by shadowing down the line of the highlight. So it doesn't look like there's noodles coming out of the head, but they're hearing about them and they're seeing formulas and they're assuming because they don't normally work with demi color. There's a lot of assuming that the color that people are using in those formulas is permanent color. When you shadow root with permanent color, permanent color has the ability to lift and lighten. So permanent color in a root shadow is pretty much a base break. So you're doing the same thing. It's going to try to lift the natural while it's also giving a little bit of tone to that area. So I highly discourage shadow rooting with permanent color. I think it's completely unnecessary. It looks very harsh and inky. It doesn't look as translucent as a demi color does. Um, and that leads to a lot of brassiness down the road as well, because you're lifting. 
So number five is minerals. And I know a lot about minerals now that I live in Florida. Unbelievable. I could not imagine that water could be this bad. Um, so this is not the right one, but this is a Malibu packet. So Malibu has all kinds of products for this issue. Minerals in the shower, in your water that you wash your hair with, it's like an oxymoron, right? Your hair looks brassy, it's dirty. You get into the shower because you want your hair to look clean and less brassy. So you shampoo it with the very water that's making it yellow and brassy because of the minerals. So it's, you just keep chasing your tail. So people get water filters, they do everything they possibly can. I just went on to, fun fact, if you go on to, if you Google um, mineral, um, I think I did mineral content of my water, Malibu C, something like that, where I put Malibu C in it. And it took me to this page on Malibu C's website where I could put my zip code in. And what I found out is after living here almost three years, the pH of my Florida water is seven point something. Hair is supposed to be 4.5 to 5.5. So my hair is constantly in a state of high pH, you know, wide open cuticle, like taking on all of the elements because this water is higher in pH. So now I've started to purchase things that bring the pH down that I use as like a cream rinse now so that I can bring that pH back down. But again, ironically, I have to rinse the cream rinse with with the water that's making it higher pH. So the moral of the story is sometimes like this photograph, this was from a Facebook uh, comment where the girl said the client left her in the above photo. The top circle is how she left the salon. And after one shampoo, she was the bottom photo. But what else do you think happened here? This isn't just minerals in the water. This is an example in the second photo of someone trying to glaze away a brassy lifting. So she used a super cool, you can see how murky and muddy that tone is on the upper picture. She overtoned the orange to get rid of the orange. What happened when the girl took a shower and shampooed her hair? She most likely toned that orange at a level higher than the orange was because the girl probably said, Oh, it's really brassy, but I like how it's light, but I want the orange to go away. So they probably went in with like a level eight or nine glaze in a super blue formula, and they probably left it on 10 minutes. That's a whole other class about glazing. They probably didn't leave it on long enough. They probably put it on soaking wet hair at the bowl, which I call lazy glazing. And if you stick with me long enough, you'll hear more about that. And that's what happens. As soon as she shampooed her hair, there's the blorange underneath because it wasn't really properly dealt with. So that is number five. The most common things we attempt to do to fix it or cover it up. Try to what I just said, trying to use a glaze that is higher in level than the brassy shade is going to be totally temporary. So this was a client that cheated on me and I teased her. I was like, you cheat on me. You got the herpes of hair color. You got blonde hair. And now it's going to take us forever to get you back to the beautiful color that I gave you. And did you, did you ever notice when your client cheats on you, the story is always someone gave me a gift certificate to a spa. And I, I just thought, you know, it was a really expensive gift certificate. I thought I'd get my color done. I'm like, mm -hmm, yeah, right. You just were trying to save money. You went somewhere else and look at what happened. You got the blarange clap. So she came in, she was devastated. And I was like, take a breath. It's going to be okay. But you can't come in on a regular day. You have to come in on my day off because it's going to be a project. I quoted her the price ahead of time, which I highly recommend. She doesn't need to be more devastated. She already just paid for this mess. Um, but if I were to go in there and say, oh, let me just put a level nine, you know, she's very orange. So if I just said, oh, let me put nine B on there, get rid of that orange. Level nine's too high. This orange isn't level nine hair. So we try to glaze away what we created, the brassiness that we created, and it just becomes overtoned and a mess. So instead, I went through and did what I did to that girl a couple slides ago that had the orange. I went through and did new highlights and then deepened everything that was that orange because I was able to glaze it deeper than the level that the orange was. And that's why it looks natural and beautiful and no more orange. 
This one is my number one peeve. Using purple shampoo. Who can tell me why purple shampoo is never going to take care of orange hair? Seeing everybody's comments about Florida water. I know I'm not alone. So what? No, it's not really. Somebody said it's a Band-Aid. It's not really a Band-Aid. Okay. I'm, I'm seeing Facebook user saying it's Violet. Um, so I don't know who Facebook user is. But purple is meant for yellow. Yellow and purple are across from each other on the color wheel. So we think purple is a fix of any kind of brassiness when brassiness comes in different flavors. You have yellow, you have orange, you have yellow orange, you have orange red, you have, there's so many different combinations. So you're never, you could leave purple shampoo on her hair for six days and not wash it out. And it's just going to dry the hell out of her hair and it's not going to take care of the orange. So a lot of people said you need blue. So there's finally... In 2020, I think they came out with a few blue shampoos. And now I've heard of some green shampoos, which it's about damn time, right? Because it's usually red that we're trying to get rid of and we need it green. And the manufacturers were probably like, if we make green shampoo, some of these idiots are going to use it on blonde hair and then we're going to get sued. I'm sure that that's what happened. Um but purple shampoo is never going to get rid of orange. And that's, I've, I hear that so many times where to the point, my cousin's um, daughter, she called me in a panic. They, she kept saying, I'm blonde on McDonald. I look like Donald Trump. My hair is so orange. And she said my color. And of course it was a, a, right before an important occasion that she needed her hair in pictures. And it was awful. And she said, they just sent me home with a big giant bottle of purple shampoo and said, just keep washing it with this. That was their answer. So that, again, is a colorist that is fearful because they don't, first of all, they don't know how they made the mistake in the first place, and they surely don't know how to fix it because they don't understand that they are the ones that created that orange and brassiness. So when we take ownership of it, that's when we can get past making that mistake. Number three, attempting to lighten the hair further, but overlapping areas that didn't need to be fixed. So a lot of times I see people giving advice that they shouldn't be giving in these Facebook forums. Anytime there's a question about a corrective thing, I hear people say bleach wash, bleach bath, bleach wash, bleach bath, to which I say bleach wash has its place. Again, the only time that I most ever have used it is in a redhead situation because I want the warmth to come out. But a bleach wash, you have to remember no hair product has, has a brain. Hair color, bleach, perm solution, anything you put on the hair, I think we give it more credit than it deserves. And we make ourselves believe that it has a brain and it knows what to do and where to go. So when you apply bleach to an entire head of hair, you have in my hair, I have artificial color that was applied at the regrowth to cover the gray, which is now working its way down my hair. So I've artificially colored hair. I have natural hair that's virgin, I have gray hair, and I have bleached hair. So that bleach is going to go in and do something to all of those things, and what do you think is going to happen? You just created an even bigger correction because you tried to do what you thought was quick, which I don't know whoever thinks a bleach wash doing anything is quick, but you created a bigger problem and most likely created some damage and some rubber banding on the ends because you went over areas that didn't need to be lightened. So how can we avoid it in the first place? So this is my favorite thing to share at hair shows. I get all creepy and I walk up to people really close and I put my face in their face and pray to, pray to God that my breath is good. And I say, I want to look into your eye and I'm going to see your eye color. And clients love this. I promise you, if you go in tomorrow, and I hope you do, and you put this in your consultation, you will get a bigger tip immediately. DM me when you do. When you look into the client's eye, when they're asking for a service where you're lightening the hair, 
what you're looking for is the circle around that black pupil inside the darker ring outside of the eye right inside you can see all the little gold flecks in her eye so look at her eyebrow color and look at her hair color that was her virgin hair color when she sat in my chair if i were to do a traditional consultation cross the room or standing over her like this which i go all into consultations in the membership heavy in the very beginning because that's the most to me the consultation is the most important part of the service, and it is skipped way too often. We talked about that in Revival. They said that people were polled and asked, you know, how many people have your uh, hairdresser? Does, does she do a consultation? 90% of hairdressers said they do them. When they polled the clients, only 15% said they actually had a consultation. So we're lying to ourselves. We can, we count a consultation. Hey, what are you doing? What are we doing today? How's it going? What did we do last time? That's not a consultation. This is a consultation. So if I were to look at her from across the room and say, oh, she's beautiful. She's got those piercing blue eyes. She's got that creamy skin, those light eyebrows and that beautiful natural hair. I'm going to go in and use hair color on her because she's gonna lift beautifully and not get brassy because she's a virgin head. I love using color on virgin hair for their first highlights. So much better for a subtle grow in. They don't get any harsh lines. It's beautiful and natural. But when I looked at her eye, I saved myself a lot of aggravation because I would have just gone right in with color and I would have been processing her and checking it and checking it and checking it and she would have been stuck in that golden stage because she has so much warmth in her eyes. So that is going to tell me before I even make a mistake. Now, this girl is what we talked about earlier. She was born a beautiful, natural blonde. Look at her eyes, white. All you see is white. Her hair is white. Her eyes are white inside. She can be as blonde as she wants to be, and you're never going to have to worry about brassiness. How many of you have ever had her in your chair? I think maybe twice in 35 years I've had that gift and I make such a big deal out of it that it's creepy. I'm like, oh my God, I'm drooling right now. I feel like a vampire. I can't wait to color your hair. I haven't had someone this light in for, and they're just like, oh, weirdo, because I'm so excited because I know I don't have to fight all the demons of the orange monster because it's, she's already born past that. She's on that level past she's already here and we only have to get to here we're trying to get people from here to here and we're wondering why we end up here it really is common sense it's almost hysterical what we think that we can do when we really never could that's the truth so this is the holy grail i saw some of you saying you have my book if you have my book this is on pages seven and i think 33 maybe 35. So pages seven and 35 in the book, this chart is there and it's there for a reason because it's super important. If you want to be able to predict hair color results, like we talked about in the very beginning of this session, I can do math and I know without a shadow of a doubt where my client is going to end up before I even open that tube of color and start squeezing. I know. So look at the chart. If I'm taking a client from a natural level five to a seven, take your finger and go across seven to where, where I'm going to land. And what do you see? Orange. So I know no matter what is in that tube, no matter what shade I pick, even if I go in with straight blue, I'm still going to have a ton of warmth in that hair because that is what lives at level seven naturally. So it's hard to wrap yourself around because you can't visibly see it in the hair before it's colored. When you look at someone like me with, you know, look at my eyebrows more than my hair because I don't have that much root, roots. But when you look at level five hair, you think, oh, five to seven, it's not that long. It should be easy to keep her somewhat cool and get her to the seven. But then when you see what lives at level seven, let me go back to the swatch. What lives at level seven is still super warm. So that's when your formulation comes in where you say, does she have any gray? Because if she doesn't have any gray, you better be using all blue to counteract all that orange if she wants a cool result. 
People are terrified to use blue in their formulas and they're overloading with natural and neutral and gold and all these other colors. And then they're like, why is it so warm? It all comes back to 50% of every formula that you mix. When you think about what's in that bowl, you need to add in what's on the hair. So 50% of every formula lives in or on the existing hair. And that's what we forget. We think that when we want to make somebody red, we just pull a tube of red. We think of it as nail polish or paint. We're like, okay, she wants to be copper red. I'm going to use copper red. But look at that scenario and imagine if the client was a level five and she wanted to be a copper red and you use all copper red in a level seven, you're going to land at level six because it's the difference between the two. Go across from level six. You have orange red without even using copper in your formula. So if you use copper red, you're having like four parts copper and orange plus red. She's going to look like bozo crazy hot roots. And then you're going to be like, how the heck did that just happen? I used a CR. It said that it was copper red. So hair color is not like paint. And I can't stress that enough. And trust me, we go into it way further in the membership on, okay, if that's true, then what do I do? That's what we get into. And I explain it over and over and over again as many times as I have to in our coaching calls to make sure you really understand. And you become a fearless formulator in no time because you understand that if you look at that chart, I can make you from a five to a seven using an N. I don't even need any red because look at how much orange is coming to the party. My N is just saying, come on in. And if I really want it bright, I say, come on in and be brighter. And I use a G, but I still don't need red. So if you're struggling with reds and you're constantly saying, what the heck happened? That's what's going on. You need to study this chart inside and out because this is like a crystal ball of hair color. It will never do you wrong. It will always lead you in the right direction. So clues from the client and the consultation. Again, I go into consultation really deeply because it is super, super important. If you hear faded brassy, didn't last, gray showed too soon, listen for those clues and do yourself a favor and really listen to them. They know their own hair. You know, I went to get a blowout for revival and I was such a pain to the girl because I said, look, I'm a hairdresser. I'm going to be annoying. My hair's super fine. So I know you're going to want to load me up with conditioner because my hair is bleached and it gets really knotty. But can you please not do any conditioner? I brought my detangling spray with me. I brought my Sheila Stotts brush with me. I said, can you just spray this like from here down? And can you use this brush and start combing it from underneath? Don't come from up top. Like this poor girl was probably like, do you think this is my first day? And I said, listen, I know my hair. And I was getting it done on Friday for Sunday because I hate my hair first day clean. It's super flat and just doesn't do anything, doesn't hold a curl. So I was doing things the way I know my hair to be. So when a client tells you, oh, my hair does this, listen to her. She's not crazy. You're just assuming that she doesn't know what she's talking about, but listen for those clues. So we talked about the Malibu. If you suspect hard water, do a treatment beforehand rather than wait and have a chemical meltdown because there's so much uh, minerals in the hair. Do not attempt the impossible, such as base breaking a level five and below and expecting a cool and pretty result. That's a base break on a level five. That's what it looks like. It's not pretty. And finally, get your desired result using foil and glazing techniques versus overall global base color. So this picture on the left was her trying to get, you know, I just want my gray cover and I want to be a little bit lighter than my natural and just have, you know, a color, not be my massy brown. And then the color on the right was done to that color that had all that red. And the reason she was able to get rid of it was the entire head was a bajillion baby lights and then shadow down with a demi root shadow. So that is the way that you get a breast free result. And then this is me again. Left is base break blorange. Right is no more base break, just highlights and a glaze. And I'm much cooler. And you can see in my skin, you can see the difference between me wearing an orange shirt and a blue dress and the, the difference in my skin tone with the different hair colors. 
So let me bring just me back. Oof, I do so much, so much examples on my hair that I end up looking like a crazy person by the time we're done these things, but it's, it's all for you. So I can embarrass myself for the good of the content. So Lisa said, Lisa is an insider. She said, oops, wrong one. I finally learned how to do a proper consultation. Thank you, Elaine Travis. Lisa, I'm so proud of. She is an existing member of the Hair Color Secrets Insiders, and she has made such progress. She was there live for all of Revival. She was taking it all in. She was engaging with the educators. She's an active student in my membership. She shows up for the coaching calls. She sends me questions ahead of time, so she makes sure that her questions are answered, and that's how it goes. You can join my group. And you can pay to sign up and you can get in there and you get all the goodies and you get overwhelmed. You're like, well, this is so exciting. And then there's people that I go on and they haven't even opened the library. And they're the same people that I see on other forums asking the same questions that you just learned tonight in one session with me about brassiness. Like, well, my client has this. And I'm like, if you would have just opened up your library and showed up for a coaching call, you would know all this stuff and you would be a rock star formulator by now. So I am here for you to guide you and share the information with you, but you have to do the work and you have to show up. And if you show up and you do the work, I promise you, your income will explode. We have Carmen on here. Carmen has tripled her paycheck since becoming an insider. She has gone solo. She's now a renter. She got off of commission. She has her own business now and she tripled her paycheck. So that's what this is all about. So this boot camp is showing you who I am and what I do and what my passion and purpose is in this industry. And it's all about hair color. There is a lot of business stuff in there, but it's primarily the business of becoming a stronger colorist, charging higher prices, making sure that you work your way towards that six figure level. Um, somebody said, we don't really learn much at school. I agree. And, and I've come to a place where I can forgive the schools because it's a government issue. It's not really just the school issue. They're not giving us enough time. I think we all need to go to the European model um, where we you know, do an absolute uh, apprenticeship where you're with people that you know care about your progress and teach you real life examples in a salon. Oh, thank you, Jimmy Ann. Elaine is worth 10 times. My daughter yells at me for what I charge too. But the thing is, I don't want people to use the tuition as an excuse. I want people to change their life and I want them to see results. And I think if the, if the price is too high, that becomes the excuse and then people stay stuck. So for me, I would rather have a larger group of people paying a really fair price and getting, like you said, 10 times more than what they paid. Um, then have people walk away saying, you know, I couldn't afford that. And now, now I still don't know how to color hair and I'm broke. Um, that was finally, that was the, uh, the thought process behind it. Here's Julia looking forward for the playback for revival and the retreat. Julia is coming to our in-person retreat. So as a hair color secrets insider, even if you join during this launch, um, the cart opens on November 1st. If you join this launch, you still have time to sign up for the retreat. We still have about 10 spots left for the in-person retreat in sunny Clearwater, Florida, which is not a bad excuse to get away for the weekend. We have a lot of awesome things planned. So you will be eligible to come if um, if you choose to and you become an insider. Sonia said, I invested and I am so grateful. We are grateful for you too, Sonia. And I don't know who this is, but the best decision I made Facebook user. So you didn't, you didn't give StreamYard your permission, but thank you, whoever it is saying that it's the best decision you made. So thank you so much. I always go long. Um, I promised myself that I would only go for an hour because my voice is already gone from revival. So in your email, you're going to get a downloadable PDF. It'll say notes from notes from session or something like that. It'll be in an email Make sure you download it. It's all the points that I made in the PowerPoint. So I don't want you to have to worry about taking 8 million notes. Um, the retreat is in March, March 13th and 14th, I believe. Um, so that PDF is in there and it's not too late to join. So if you enjoyed tonight and you want to share this with another stylist, please share away. We meet again on the 26th. 
Let me double check. Yes, Tuesday the 26th is session two, and Thursday the 28th is the third session. And then you are invited to a masterclass. So tonight, when I said, you know, we don't really have time to get all the way into this, we'll talk about that later. The masterclass is basically like a 90 minute full on QA of every question that you have during boot camp. Because I can't see you during this boot camp, I can only see your comments. Write down all your questions and then sign up for a masterclass. And when you come to masterclass, it's like revival. I can see you on the screen. I can unmute you, spotlight you, and we can chat about your questions. So it's definitely worth coming to the masterclass. And I would really love it if you could pick one and stick to it and show up for it. We only, Zoom only allows 100 people on the masterclasses. So there's like 700 people that signed up for this boot camp. And there's only 100 spots in the masterclass. So don't sign up for all three masterclasses and be like, I don't know which one I can make it to because then you're going to prevent somebody else who's actually going to show up from doing it. So pick a date, plan on showing up. You have to be live in the masterclass because it's question and answers. I can't you know, reach out to you three days later and say, what was your question? So it's important to be live and there's prizes for being there live. Everyone who comes live and stays till the end gets a great prize. And we also give away bigger prizes during the master classes. So thank you for coming tonight. We had a nice group on here. We're just under 150 live and it's only day one. So I hope to see you all back for session two. Please check your emails, check your spam folders, your junk folders. I promise you, if you are here right now, you are getting those emails. So I always have people say, I'm not getting them. I'm not getting them. I can't find them. They are there. They're hiding somewhere in a junk folder. So if you put expert color solutions in your safe contacts somehow, I think you put me in your contacts of your email and that's how it works, then it won't go into junk. So thank you for joining me. I look forward to seeing all of you next week. Have a great weekend and try that eye trick when you go into the salon tomorrow. And I want to hear from you if you got a bigger tip. Can't wait to hear about it.